Hey everyone, how you doing? Hope everyone is uh, having a good summer. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, CRT, critical race theory, um, being woke, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> some people, uh, when you talk to some younger Christians who are um, who believe that, uh, who are woke, as they say now. Um, some of them won't give you the full truth of what uh, critical race theory, CRT, is all about. They'll concentrate on things like, um, you know, where the Bible says to weep with those who weep. Um, they'll, say that, uh, they'll say that through the lens of believing <clears throat> that um, black people are still so victimized. Um, not saying that that never happens, um, <clears throat> There's obviously racism in the world, um, but I seen videos of, you know, I mean, last year, those riots, I saw more hate crimes of white people getting hurt, uh, you know. Um, I mean, we see uh, companies like Coca-Cola saying, be less white, but that's okay. Um, uh, Black Lives Matter, the statement is true, but not the organization. So I want to be clear on that. Um, obviously, the Bible teaches that racism is sinful, the biblical definition of racism. And um, the organization of Black Lives Matter is a total antichrist Marxist democratic hate group that supports abortion, um, killing babies. And the Democratic Party is not a friend to black people since... Um, they help to keep um, abortion legal, and um, they're the best apologists for abortion. And 65% of babies who are murdered in abortion um, are black babies. So in reality, the Democratic Party is um, not uh, really helpful to uh, minorities. Um, the Black Lives Matter organization supports abortion, homosexuality, and before I forget, um, I uh, did a video, um, by the way, um, about those who advocate uh, slavery reparations. Um, we have to remember that no one living in our time has a great-great-grandfather that owns slaves. Okay, so that's really important to remember. Um, I made a video. Uh, I showed Bible verses they used out of context to, uh, you know, to support slavery reparations. And, and I just, I, use, I showed Bible verses that people use out of context uh, for that. And I discussed, you know, the biblical context. <clears throat> Wokeness um, taken to the extreme supports looting. Uh, we saw that last year. And it, it, this is just insanity. This is absolute insane. I mean, uh, David Platt, who was a pastor, uh, he's, he said that he say he's part of the problem about him. He said that he's part of the problem because uh, he's a white pastor. Uh, no, part of the problem is people who think like Platt and Platt is part, part, of, part of the problem. <clears throat> so, what is critical race theory? Well, it separates people. It's pretty much um, teaches that all white people are inherently racist <clears throat> and um, they are in the oppressor class and <clears throat> minorities are in the oppressed class. And so this is actually creating racism. This is cause this also redefines definitions of words to control the narrative. It redefines the word racism and it labels everything as white supremacy. If you disagree with these people on anything, it's white supremacy. Um, if you are white, you're definitely racist no matter what. But if you are in a minority group, um, even though you might not like white people, that's not racist because um, you were not a part of um, 
a power structure that was capable of oppressing people. So, so it's telling one whole group of people, these people over here are, are racist, no matter what. But this other group of people can be racist, but it's really not racism. Critical race theory. So, yeah, it has to redefine definitions of words to um, uh, control the narrative. This wokeness nonsense being promoted by uh, pastors and people and, you know, Jamar Tisby, he's one of um, the people advoca advocating this. We have David Platt, who seems to be woke. Um, unfortunately, this is a poison. This is a poison to the world and to the church. I've said that before. Um, we have to remember that it's so clear the early church did not function in the way that critical race theory teaches, okay? Um, or intersectionality teaches. And Jewish people were oppressed by the Romans, right? Do we see the early church? Um, do we see the early church uh, uh, functioning in a way how critical race theory slash wokeness slash intersectionality, how it's taught about separating people and all this kind of nonsense? Um, no, we don't. We don't see the early church uh, uh, functioning like this. And, I mean, I've dealt before in other videos with uh, showing um, how that side takes Bible verses out of context. Um, but this is a new philosophy, and we see um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, God's Word. It says to us, See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy an empty deception according to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of the world, rather than according to Christ. We see warnings in the Bible um, about this sort of thing. We see 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. And we, it's unfortunate. There's a lot of younger Christians who are brainwashed by this nonsense. People who teach this. Um, the Bible speaks of how we should um, look at these people. Romans 16, 17 says, I urge you, brethren, Keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you learned and turn away from them. Um, I mean, these people are causing division by this, by bringing this into the church, using scripture out of context, as if this is what God wants. Uh, Galatians 3.28, I think it's 3.28. Let me just make sure really quick. Um, if you go to uh, Galatians uh, 3.28, um, Galatians is clear that no matter what your ethnicity is, it says... Um, you are all one in Christ Jesus. So we need to remember that. We need to remember the simplicity of what God's word is telling us. How does this apply today? Uh, this is a poison that has infiltrated the church. I mean, um, I noticed wokesters who are, you know, totally brainwashed by uh, CRT, critical, critical race theory, uh, believe that there exists so much systematic racism and live with a, um, it, it's making people live with a victim mentality and a 
persecution complex. I mean, let's let's um, um, say the truth about this. Um, Vody Bauckham's new book, I highly recommend it. Please get it. Vody Bauckham's new book, he's a black pastor, and his new book called Fault Lines in Chapter 5. It has a number of examples of people, people um, including a so-called reverend who lied and bared false witness and claimed that they were victims of race-based persecution by police. But thank God for body cam footage from the police. They were um, exposed um, for the lying hypocrites that they are. And you think about that, um, you know, what does God's word say in Jeremiah 13, 10? God speaks of those who refuse to listen to his word, and God calls them totally worthless. That's God's word, totally worthless, um, to people who uh, uh, choose to ignore his word. Um so we need to uh, understand these things. Um, for liberal, uh, woke Christians, um, you think that because Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield, uh, because they owned slaves, they were not real Christians or not real followers of God. Um, have you thought about um, what, what do you do with the fact that, um, you know, Abraham in the Bible owned slaves? So did David and Solomon. And look at the book of Philemon, you know, where it says that verse about a beloved brother. So we need to, um, understand historical context, um, and not judge people by the standards of today when they lived in a different era where biblical morality is always the same. But like I said, you have to understand where the world, where the country was at at that time. Um, how are these people being treated? And so that has to be taken into account. Um, so, for some reason, the wokeness, the acceptance of homosexuality somehow goes hand in hand with this wokeness. I mean, they're just, those two subjects are, are friendly to each other. People who are woke, they tend to be um, uh friendly towards the homosexual movement. And when that happens in the church, that is unbelievably reprehensible to God. Um, Tim Keller was asked, does homosexuality send you to hell? And he replied, no, no, quote, no, no. Heterosexuality doesn't get you into heaven. So how in the world can homosexuality get you into hell? End of quote. And then sometime later, Ed Litton, um, the current president of the SBC, and uh, J.D. Greer, um, you know, plagiarizing him, gives the same answer. Um, so we have to remember the Bible um, warns that false teachers will come into the church. It warns of false apostles. Um, we have to remember that teachers of God's word will have a stricter judgment, James 3, 1. Bad theology um, equals the wrath of God, Job 42, 7. And being ashamed of God's word puts you under the condemnation of what Jesus said in Mark 8, 38. Um, we know from the scriptures God calls homosexuality an abomination, Leviticus 18, 22. In Genesis 19, God roasted to death. He roasted to death homosexuals. Um, in Matthew uh, 19, 4-6, Jesus says that marriage is one man, one woman. Um, we see in Romans 1, it is so clear 
that God is speaking against homosexuality. Romans 1, uh, chapter 1. Um, we see in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10, it, it, it speaks... It, it speaks against it there. Um, it's clear in the Greek, um, arsenokoite, um, it's very clear in the original language that um, it's talking about what men do with men in bed. And um, Dr. James White, who has taught Greek for years, he's a seminary professor, he has a, um, his podcast called The Dividing Line, He's done teachings on this before. There are people that try to twist things. There's a movie coming out. It's trying to use um, a mistranslation in an English version um, where Mar Martin Luther mistranslated something where it had to do with pedophilia. But, um, and they're using this, they're using their argument. Uh, it's a movie coming out using an argument about an English mistranslation and that the Bible never actually spoke um, against homosexuality, which is a total lie. But, you know, people are so brainwashed and so many churches are so um, poor students of the Bible. And, and it's, I mean, so many churches keep their people on such a baby level of the Bible. Um, we see um, Leviticus uh, 20, God gives a list of sins including homosexuality in uh, verse 13. And in verse 23, God's speaking about the nations that are committing these sins. What did God say? He said in verse 23, they did all these things and therefore I have abhorred them. I have abhorred them. That's what uh, God's word is saying. So one of the problems is um, so many people have this wish-washy uh, view of who God is. Um, and we have to have a biblical view of who God is, because if we don't, we're committing idolatry. We're not worshiping God and how he presented him, his own self in his word. So when you're worshiping him, Jesus said, remember in John 4, uh, the Father seeks those who search for him in spirit and in truth. Well, if you're not worshiping God of how he, um, his revelation, how he revealed himself to us, if you're trying to water him down and pretend that he and he's something else, then that's the sin of idolatry. And the Bible teaches idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God. Their place will be the lake of fire. So we need to know who God is, and, and we do that by looking at his revelation, his word, okay? So Isaiah 42, 13, the Bible says, the Lord, um, the Lord will go out like a warrior. He will stir his zeal like a man of war. He will shout indeed. He will raise a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. Exodus 15.3 says, The Lord is a man of war. Nahum chapter 1, verse 2, it says, The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and keeps wrath for his enemies. Deuteronomy 32.39, God said, See now, that I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. So we need to know that, you know, God is not joking around about who he is and his holiness and how he commands us to live and commands us to repent of our sins um, because, you know, we, um, this is his word to us, and um, too many people have a wish-washy view of God. By the way, sorry, but Jill Olstein, he's a big-time false teacher. Following him, wow, I mean, so many errors there. Anyway, um, and you know, what a joke when people say that Jesus only preached hell 
to the Pharisees and not to his people. That is something that I heard even a pastor um, communicate that. And people just hear lies and repeat them over and over again. I mean, Mark 4.34 says, He, Jesus, did not speak to them without a parable, but he was explaining everything privately to his own disciples. And his parables were filled with hellfire. I mean, the parable of the wheat and tares, Matthew 13, the parable of the ten virgins, the parable of the talents and the sheep and the goats, Matthew 25, the Sermon on the Mount. I mean, I mean what wasn't just to Pharisees. I mean, he preached hell and there, right? Uh, Matthew 5, 29 to 30, uh, verse 22, the, the dragnet, uh, Matthew 13, uh, 47 to 50, uh, um, or Jesus teaching the apostles about forgiveness ended with, you know, hellfire, Matthew 18, 34 to 35, uh, Jesus teaching about he's the vine in John 15, 6, and, you know, Paul, um, uh, by the Holy Spirit, uh, preached Old Testament wrath to New Testament Christians in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. So uh, Jesus said that hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm never dies, where the fire is never quenched. Jesus said it's eternal punishment and um, outer darkness. Um, the book of Revelation says the smoke of their torment go up forever. They have no rest day and night. Um, and the only way to escape it is to repent of your sins and have Jesus as your Lord. Um, know who the biblical Jesus is, okay? The real Jesus of the Bible. Um, there was a woman who was causing uh, sin in the early church. Jesus um, threatened that he would make her sick and kill her children unless she repents. That's in Revelation chapter 2, verses 20 to 23. John 15, 14, Jesus said, You are my friends if you do what I command you. The Bible is serious about sin. Um, Colossians 3, 5 to 6, it says, Therefore treat the parts of your earthly body as dead to sexual immor immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. That's New Testament. So just because you believe in Jesus and go to church and do good works and spend time praying, that doesn't mean you're really a Christian. That doesn't mean you're really saved. And that doesn't mean that Jesus loves you. So let's go to Jesus's words so we know who Jesus actually is. Um, so we don't fall under his condemnation. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Jesus said these words, okay? Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on, the, on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Leave me, you who practice lawlessness. Could you imagine what it would be like to go up to Jesus on Judgment Day and he just says, depart from me, i never known you. There is nothing, nothing more terrifying than that. So, we don't want to be brainwashed by poisonous philosophy that comes from the world and then try to eisegete that and import that into our Bibles and teach it in churches. This is 
it's a result of we live in a nation that is under the judgment of God. We see that in Romans 1 that gives us a picture of what a nation looks like when it's under the judgment of God. By the way, when that's happening, homosexuality does become a big thing. God withdraws his grace and gives the culture over to the sins that they want. We are under the condemnation. Our nation is under the condemnation of um, Isaiah 520, where we have a nation that calls evil good and good evil. Um, homosexuality is being praised. Um, little boys dressing up like girls, parents, uh, uh, transgender um, story time in libraries. Um, brainwashing little kids with LGBT agendas. Um, I mean, for crying out loud, we're, we're arguing over uh, should men use women's bathrooms? And this whole thing with that there's so many different genders. Um, this is, this is, um, it just makes me think about where the scriptures say that God delivers people over to a strong delusion. Um, he withdraws himself and delivers the culture over to the sins that they crave. Romans 11, 8, you know, it says God has given them a spirit of stupor. Isaiah 5, 20, they're calling good evil and evil good. Um, Isaiah 19, um, we see that a divided nation is a nation... Uh, it is a judgment of God. A nation that is divided is a judgment of God. Um, we see in Isaiah 19, God says, I'll set Egyptian against Egyptian. So we see that, you know, that is a judgment of God when, when there's division within a nation. And so we live in a country where there's tons of churches, but <clears throat> so many of them have really bad theology and they keep their people on baby, baby, baby levels of the Bible. And so as a result, um, the compromise and um, making the church an entertainment zone, what, it, what it's doing, it's um, bringing in unregenerated people who really don't love God's word and they love their own sins. And so they want to feel like they're saved and um, go to church. And so you have churches pandering to people that don't really love God's word and they want to bring them in and they're compromising. And see, we this is nothing new. We see what happens um, so many times when Israel went apostate, when um, there was false teaching. We saw the, the degradation. Um, uh, we, we see how the nation just went down um, when they pretty much threw God away. And so we, um, we need to be serious students of God's word and take God's word serious. And so um, get the book Fault Lines by Voli Balcom. Uh, Vody Balcom. It's a fantastic book. Um, haven't even finished it yet, but it's it's really good. And um, there is another one that's uh, We Will Not Be Silenced by Erwin Lutzer. Let's make sure I got that. Uh... <clears throat> and um, that's also a great, uh, I haven't finished that one either, but you can get that either on Amazon, CBD. Um, that talks about, you know, what's going on with critical race theory, um, the, the, the um, Democratic Party, how communist they have become, and um, how they are um, trying to pretty much overthrow our Constitution, take away our freedom, uh, make us a bunch of socialist commies. And unfortunately, 65, maybe 70% of millennials, according to some sources, um, want socialism. So, I mean, we're losing our freedoms. We're a nation under the judgment of God. 
And we need to uh, live the way that God wants us to live. We need to proclaim the gospel. We need to defend the, you know, defend God's word. And we don't want to be like it says in what God said in Jeremiah, people who disregard God's word. I quoted it earlier. God calls them totally worthless. And so let's be honest and just tell people it. it this is what God's word says about you. I mean, this is what God's word says about people who disregard his word. And so we need that to, uh, we need to keep that in mind. We need to look at the warnings of scripture and not fall into that trap and not be that way because um, uh, there's, there's, there is, um, a lot of danger there and the wrath of God eternally so I recommended uh, those two books fantastic um, I also highly recommend um, the podcast on YouTube called the dividing line with dr. James white he has um, uh, dealt uh, with uh, um, he has refuted people who uh, advocate um, this critical race theory, intersectionality, wokeness, and um, he'll, he'll quote um, uh, big names from that side and refute them on his podcast. I highly recommend it. That is um, my favorite podcast where I am very spiritually fed. Love Dr. James White's ministry. But um, let's not be brainwashed by the philosophy of this world and bring that into the church and let's not be what God says um, people who disregard his word are totally worthless and let's see those warnings the warnings of God and uh, remember that God uh, commands everyone to repent and uh, come to the Lord Jesus Christ